Alright, so about two years ago I replaced my entire car audio system in my car and I never made the positive cable that goes to my amplifier correctly. As you see, it's just there. Surprisingly, it worked for the past two years and it's still working, but the connection is really loose. So today we're going to make it look professional, we're going to make it look nice, and I got all these tools for it. Let's get right to it. Okay, so I got this crimping tool from Amazon for only $27. There's a bunch of them out there. It doesn't matter which one you get, they're all worth the same. They're all about the same. They're all made in China. And professional tools like this cost over $100. On anything like this, I don't do this daily. And also the little kit. The little kit with lugs, I highly recommend you to get it. They're like 20 bucks. There's a lot of options out there with the different quantity of them. I got the highest quantity, just kind of like for uh, future. It comes with the heater shrinks. And what's good about these uh, heater shrink tubes, they are rated to three to one. So they shrink really good and really tight. So let's go ahead and we need to power off this negative cable so we don't short anything. We're gonna remove this cable um, and uh, just Get it done. By the way, I actually have a way to remove entire cable and do it at the workbench, but you know what? I need something that is gonna be portable. So this tool is can be portable. There is another tool that you can get that you use hammer. You see a picture right now on it. They also around 20 bucks, but you need to actually have a space somewhere to knock that lug and really, really secure it. So for that, you need to remove the cable. I want something portable so this is really going to do the job also make sure you use correct conduit look what happened with mine just in the two years apparently the conduit I used was incorrect and it was not under hood rated and it could not hold high heat Alright, this is our cable and as you see it doesn't look pretty at all. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this fresh so we're going to make a fresh connection. I'm going to slide the new conduit all the way down, it's just easier that way. And uh, don't forget to put the shrink tube on it before you press in and squeeze in your lug um, on the wire. Now I have a true four gauge wire here. So we're going to use one of these lugs that is ready to four gauge, but I don't really like the way how they sit. They just sit really loose in there. I mean, they, there is no way the scrimp tool can crimp it so much. So in my case, I'm just gonna be using six by 516 and what's the 516 number means it's the size of the hole and i found that 516 worked perfectly for my setup for example this is uh, 3 8 and 3 8 is just going to be too big doesn't mean it's not going to work you work but you know you want to do it right you want to do it perfect so there's no point picking the bigger size hole so 516 will perfectly work and i'm just going to show it to you how snug this lock is going to fit over this supposed to be four gauge wire there you go now don't forget to put your heat shield and actually this particular heat shield will fit over it anyway uh, even after you crimp it so let's go and crimp it now all these tools have a little guide on them because you have to pick the proper 
um, adapter to crimp uh, your logs. And the only thing I don't like about these tools, and they're all kind of like this, I'm not sure about the professional tools, but these are just wiggle too much. For, for example, if one will be down and one will be up, and when you try to crimp it, I'm just going to show it to you, this is what's going to happen with your log. It's just not going to sit properly. Uh, so make sure you set them down, put your log in there, and crimp it. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, this fitting definitely not going anywhere. It sits in there really, really tight. Now we're just gonna shrink this tube, wrap it around and call it a day. <laughs> 